Hey there, laser makers. Jim here uh, with another video tutorial. Uh, today's topic is the node editor. Uh, the node editor has a lot of different functions, uh, so I'm going to try to move right along. Um, but feel free to pause or ask questions. You know, pause as you need to to replay stuff, or ask questions in the comments, or catch me on Facebook or one of the other places you might have heard about the video. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first off, the node editor is this uh, this you know, this six like on down here in Lightburn. Uh, it's like a little geometric shape with some dots on the corners. And the way this works is for editing. It basically, anytime you have a shape uh, and that shape either turns uh, or bends, that's going to be a node. Uh, so there's and there's a couple different types of nodes. We'll go over those. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, so we're going to make a shape here. We're just going to make a we're going to make it square, and we're going to do a circle on top of that. And we're going to uh, we're going to add let's add one more shape here. We'll add a hex cap just for good measure. Uh, so we we'll add each of these shapes here. Um, now the first thing to be aware is when you want to do node editing. Uh, if you use one of these pre-made shapes, uh, these are not paths yet at this point. So if you want to edit the nodes, so you'll see if I click on nodes, there's actually no nodes on these shapes. Uh, that's because these are still considered shapes in Lightburn. They are not paths that you can edit. Uh, so the way we fix that is we go back to the selection tool. We select an item, and in this case, we're going to select all items. I'm going to select a hit Control A to select all, and I'm going to right click on those and just say convert to path. Uh, by converting this to a path, it's now a uh, editable uh, shape in Lightburn. This includes the circles. Uh, so you, what you'll see is on the circle, I have four four nodes that can be edited. Um, these are called smooth nodes. They're designated by a small circle. Uh, if they were a square node, as in over here, a, a corner node, uh, or rather, uh, is a square, little square, um, that indicates it's a sharp corner versus uh, a rounded, uh, you know, a bent angle. Um, so we'll start with uh, we'll start with kind of discussing the differences between these. So a smooth node uh, works like a Bezier tool. Uh, the way a, a smooth node kind of functions um, is these length, these uh, kind of handles off to the side of the node indicate the strength of the curve and the angle of the curve, right? So the handle's always going to be, uh, the two sides are always going to be in line with each other. Um, with caveats, sometimes when you convert a, a node from a corner to a circle, sometimes you'll end up with uh, handles that are not lined up. Uh, but as soon as you try to move them, they will align, uh, which can cause some undesired side effects. Uh, so just be aware of that. Anyways, uh, so creating uh, you know creating shapes, you can see you can uh, kind of do some pretty strange things here by kind of making the the strength of the uh, the line, uh, but you can adjust the kind of the angle of things. Now, one thing to note: um, notice this green uh, node here is larger than the other the other three. Um, this is indicating that this is the starting node. Um, it is possible to change the starting node. I don't recall off the top of my head how to. Um, but that's relevant only when you're doing certain other things. Uh, so for now, we're just going to kind of go back to this. Now, one thing we can do is we can change nodes to uh, a different type. So we can change like this smooth node into a corner node. Um, and now, as a corner node, the handles can be moved independent of each other, right? So... We can now do things like make this a sharp corner uh, versus, uh, you know, versus smooth. Um, and the way I change that smooth node to a corner node um, is you hover over the node you want to change and you push C, corner node. 
Uh, so pushing C on the keyboard will change that to a corner. Now it's a square, you see, and you can change it. Uh, likewise with lines, you can do the same thing. If you hover over a line and you uh, change this to, uh, if you change it from a curve to a line, uh, the key for that is L for line. So if you hover over a curved line and you change it, hit L, it'll change it to a straight line. Um, this no longer has drag handles because it's a straight line. It's going to go straight between two points, so you can't edit the handles. If you want to convert that back, you hover over the line and change it, hit S on the keyboard. That changes it to a smooth line. Now it has handles um, that you can, you know, drag and change things to. So uh, it'll take a little practice to get kind of get the hang of the differences between smooth lines and curved lines, but for the most part, the important bits to remember are the keys for those, which are S, L, and C. That's smooth line or node. Uh, L is curve, curve to line, and C is converting a node to a corner node, a smooth node to a corner node. If you forget what these key sequences are, you can hover over the node editor button, and it'll show you a list of these. Now, moving on, uh, let's move to another function, um, which is to delete a node or a line. Um, so if you wanted to, say, create, take this circle and change it into a half circle, you can simply do that by deleting this fourth node. We're going to go ahead and delete that. We're going to hover over the node. We're going to push a D for delete. Um, it's going to change it into a half circle by removing the node. It's not quite a half circle because these are still curved nodes, uh, smooth nodes on the edges. If I wanted to change that, I could just hover over this this uh, fourth side and hit L, which should change it into a line. So it's now a half circle. Um, so that's how we can do that. Uh, you can also delete a specific line rather than a node, right? So if you hover over a line, press D for delete, it'll delete that line. Um, this is good if you want to, you know, have part of a shape, uh, you know, to work with, or you have an extra line in here, you want to delete this guy. So let's say you wanted to, uh, you wanted to delete this line right here. So you can delete that guy and start working with that. Now, there is some things, I'm going to back up those last two changes because I want to use these shapes for some other stuff. Uh, so deleting an, a line and deleting a node is just the D key. The next thing you can do is you can edit a shape and you can use what's called the trim function. This, the key for this is T. Uh, and what this does is it will trim uh, so like in this shape, if I'm hovering over this section that's inside the square, what it'll do is it'll trim the shape from the edge from wherever the next intersecting line is, right? So from this edge up, up here at the top of the square, and it should trim down here to the edge of the circle. So if I hover over this and press T, it will trim the parts out that are on the inside of the shape until it comes across an intersecting line. Um, likewise, actually let's go ahead and put that back. Likewise, if I had a line like this one that's intersecting with the circle and I wanted this to continue straight until it hits the edge of the square, I can hover over this line and press E for extend a line. What it will do is it will extend that line out until it intersects with some other line. Uh, so it'll continue in a straight line until it intersects with something. Um, there's a couple other things we can do related to nodes and how they interact with each other. The first thing is we can, if we're hovering over a line, we can press uh, M to insert a node in the middle. Uh, so M will insert a new node right in the center of this line segment. Or if we wanted to, we could hit I to insert a node wherever we're hovering. Um, now some, some useful tips about how this works is when you're hovering over a line, you'll notice that there's a couple different uh, mouse cursors that can show up. 
Um, and those mouse cursors, when you're when you have this little squiggly mouse cursor, this is telling you you're hovering over a line. When you get kind of in the center of the line, it's going to turn to a line with a circle on it. This is telling you you're at the midpoint. And there's there's a bit of a range. It's not like very precise, but as long as you have that icon, any like if you insert a node, it will insert at the midpoint, even if you're slightly off, as long as you have that mouse cursor. Right, so we can insert a line there, or insert a node there. Um, we'll go ahead and delete that node, and then I'll show you when you're not at the midpoint, if you use M, it will put it in the same spot. Right. Um, the other thing, the other kind of shape that you can get is a line with a circle and an X. So it's a, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's basically a cross with a circle in the middle. This is telling you that you're at the intersection of two lines. So if you insert a, a, a mid or insert a node, it's going to insert it directly on the intersection of those two spots. Um, and this is useful for what we're going to get to here in just a second. So we're going to switch to this other shape. I'm going to also insert a midpoint or a point here on the intersection. Um, and let's create one down here on this intersection. Now it's always going to be working on the shape that's selected, the, the dotted, you know, the one that's selected currently. So it won't insert shape, insert nodes on these other shapes. It'll only insert ones on the node that you're currently working with. Now the last thing I wanted to show you in relates in relation to nodes is uh, breaking shapes. So right now this half circle is a single shape. If we wanted to break that shape apart so that we can join it to another shape, um, what we can do is we can hover over a node that we want to break um, and then hit the B key. Uh, what that's going to do, even though it looks like it didn't do anything, it actually broke the shape. So what I can do is if I drag one of these nodes, you'll see that it actually separated it into two separate nodes, um, which are now independent of each other. So we're going to put those back in the right locations. Um, they're still still broken. Uh, so now we're going to go over here to this shape and we also have a node there that we created on the intersection. We're going to go ahead and break this shape there too. Um, so now notice this one uh, deselected when I broke the shape. The reason it deselected is that this is now an incomplete, there's two separate shapes, right? So I have this one because they weren't connected to begin with. And I have this one. Uh, this is useful if you want to delete parts or say like you had a circle and part of it was over the top of a over the top of the in part inside of your engraving and the other part was outside the engraving. Maybe you want to break that circle, make the outside uh, on one layer and the inside on a different layer so that you could have a cut line on the outside and an engraved line on the inside, right? So maybe you don't want to cut all the way through. Um, that's how you can break the shape apart, put it on two separate layers so that you're doing two different operations on this. Um, I think that covers most of everything in the node editor uh, with the exception of one kind of neat feature. This is new in uh, 1.3. So if you're not using 1.3 or higher, um, this won't work for you, uh, but uh, if you have a shape that you've moved, so let's go ahead and uh, rotate this. Actually, we'll use the square. We're just going to rotate this kind of a little bit. Um, so let's say you're trying to align some stuff, um, and you know it's really hard to like get things just right, right? Even if you eyeball it pretty close. Um, it's hard to make sure things are lining, lined up and you can use, like when you're rotating, you can use a shift um, to constrain the rotation to 90 degrees or, or to like even, I think it's like 30, 45, you know, 60 and 90 degree increments. If you hold control uh, or what is it? Uh, yeah, so shift shift constraints to 90 degree increments or to normal intervals. The problem with doing that, as you can, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, 
the shape was already misaligned. So it will only it will only constrain within the constraints of what was already there. So let's say we wanted to align this. Let's go back to the node editor. We want to align this shape so that it's perfectly vertical again. You can hover over that line and press A. And what that's going to do is it's going to align the shape depending on... Uh, so it's going to align the shape to the nearest 90, 45... Uh, you know, 90 or 45 degree increment, um, you know, to kind of straighten things out. So, so if it's if it's crooked, hit A. It's going to align it to 90 degrees. If we if we moved it farther, uh, so let's move it a little bit farther here. We move it like this. Go back to the node editor. When we align, it should align to a 45 degree angle. Um, if we moved it yet further yet uh, close to close to this um, so now this if we hover over this line that's almost horizontal and we align it's going to align to the horizontal method or to the horizontal orientation so i hope that helps um, let me know in the comments or uh, on facebook if you have more questions and i'll just uh, put these Put these uh, keys on the screen here, uh, so the, and we'll use that as the thumbnail for the video. Hope this helps, and let me know. Uh, let me know what else you want to see. Thanks, guys.